uh, distinguished guests, speakers, moderators, organizers, and the faculty and students of JSW, a very good afternoon. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Leakey, for a very generous introduction, and uh, thank you to JSW Law School for ensuring a platform for young people like us to come together and speak our thoughts and share our ideas in this interdisciplinary climate dialogue. Uh, so moving on with the session on youth and climate change, I'd like to highlight two things that I've been doing to address climate change and climate action. The first one being the ethnographic research, and the second one being the advocacy program, especially for young people in our country. Climate change at this point has become a grave concern for me and also for other young people because Climate change is a phenomenon that will predominantly affect the younger upcoming generations like us and drug rule in ways we cannot comprehend if you don't take actions now. Even His Majesty always iterates that the future of our country lies in the hands of the youth. And also in one of, the, one of his international address, as far as I remember, he said, quote unquote, future is actually human, they are the youths of today. And this statement is really precious, like really, because Our Majesty um, acknowledges the presence and the potential of young people in Bhutan and also around the world. But the question then is, how secure and foreseeable the future is with climate change becoming an increasing global planetary crisis with Bhutan experiencing rapid climate crisis in the recent decades? With this dilemma and with a form of constant existential crisis, but also with an imaginative hope to live a healthier future, I was and am always like number one. What can I do and offer as an individual for a cause like this? Number two, how can I contribute to informing people around me understand uh, what climate change really entails? And also because I come from an anthropology background, I wanted to understand and bring forth the alternative uh, local and indigenous understanding of climate change in Bhutanese context that goes much beyond what uh, science has to offer, which I'll come back to later. Um, so to answer such personal queries, um, I took up research to drive into the climate quest. Research became a means for me, just like how media became a means for Danker and Dradul. Um, so take the research expect forward. Uh, I began researching on climate change during the time I began my undergrad uh, program in anthropology, that's like four years ago. Um, I've conducted ethnographic research among the highlanders of um, Merak and Sakteng and Forest and part of Bhutan, and also briefly among um, the highlanders of sea and western highlands, especially with uh, my engagement with a Himalayan Center for Environmental Humanities, which is a research center at uh, Royal Thimpu College. And also through my current engagement with BKIND program, a Bhutanese knowledge for indigenous development, which is an action-oriented and a transdisciplinary research at Dharana Center for Social Research and Development, which is a research arm and a think tank of Dharana Foundation. Uh, through this, I'm conducting uh, climate ethnography among the lowlanders um, of Punakha. In doing so, what I've learned is that every community, uh, no matter whether it's a highland or a lowland community, has their own ways of interpreting um, climate change using their own local idioms. For them, climate change is not that of a scientific, but that of a cultural phenomenon. Let's say you ask uh, some local people what do they think about what, why climate change takes place. They would not explain it using scientific terms or modalities, but that of their own culture um, and religious associated understandings of it. So, okay. uh, for instance, if you go to Merak, um, you will see the Highlanders evaluate the changes in the weather patterns as the doing of the deities. And likewise, you see they interpret uh, the melting uh, snows and glaciers as the doing of the deities as well. And if you go to Punaka, people will predict the occurrence of flood or flash flood by evaluating um, the chirping sounds of certain species of birds. So acknowledging the presence um, of those deities and animals as uh, co-inhabiting the landscape, who are other than human histories and agents, and also by bearing in mind um, the repercussions of upsetting those beings, the local hesitate to, for instance, you know, the water 
body or a leg or cut a tree or throw uh, garbage elsewhere. So such local understanding and knowledge of climate change in a way offer a local climate action, you see? And such uh, botanist indigenous knowledge I feel is very crucial for young people especially to learn and be aware of. More so, it also offers an alternative climate knowledge which is not scientific but that of a culture and a social. And this is really significant for a Buddhist country like ours where culture, tradition, and heritage takes a very central place. Uh, so these research engagements have really opened my eyes and made me more passionate about climate change, climate and multi-species justice, and hence I wanted um, more young people to be engaged in a similar way. Therefore, as a means of um, to ensure climate action, one of the programs we initiated was called um, a drone game series under the banner of um, Rural Urban Friendship Camp, where we engage children as young as um, 10 to 11 years old in the first ever um, climate research program for uh, the children in the country. And that was really exciting for us. Um, during the race, we first introduced the ABCDs of research, the basics, basis of research, and following engaged them in conducting um, mini research in groups surrounding pressing topics like um, climate change, pollution, and other environmental related um, prob problems. This was mainly done with the intention to make young people understand about issues surrounding climate change and climate crisis through um, evidence-driven activity like research that most young Buddhist people are not familiar with actually because um, all of us know, know that both research and climate change is not something that is being introduced in any formal or informal um, school curriculums in Bhutan. Hence, and since we're on the topic, um, I'd like to plead the policymakers, if any one of you is in this room or if any one of you is watching us online, please consider um, incorporating climate knowledge and studies in the school and college curriculums because it will make a difference, a huge, huge difference. Because the fact is, um, if you do not know about something, there's nothing we can do about it, right? Likewise, um, the climate, likewise with uh, climate change, if young people are not informed and educated about it, there's nothing we can do about it. And finally, I, uh, I mean, we believe that this forum will further help uh, the young people like us connect reach and shake hands with the right alliances, as one of the speakers mentioned yesterday. Um, Tashi Dele to JSW Law School for the birth of um, Climate Change and Environmental Law, Law Center. <coughs> and thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs>